there is a place that is so disconnected and connected to everything that it is hard to grasp its true meaning, its purpose, understanding what it is or where it is, why and how, its purpose, it as a destination is inconceivable. But simply put, it is a place, and in this space, we see things moving, objects moving in tandem, coinciding and correlating, gears shifting, moving, working together, and as pieces work together, as things fall into place, all seems to be going well. Except in a far corner, something lurks. And as it creeps into the space, it reaches and grasps a hold, locking these pieces down, rendering them immovable. And slowly but surely, the cogs of the mis this machine begin to slow until it cannot work anymore. And in that space, there can be no hope for anything. For as this progression is allowed to continue, if it is not allowed, if it is allowed to continue, if it is not halted, there will surely be a price to play for everyone. And then we turn our attention to the shoreline of a inconspicuous beach a place in space that seems to hold no purpose or usefulness other than this is simply where you all are you briefly now vaguely remember having your hands all pressed together on this stone this crystal this piece of something, this tether to multiple worlds, and it slips away from your grasp as you feel the sand underneath your feet and look at each other now as there's now nothing beneath all of you. What do you all do? Uh, Joshua, just looking around for his team. I mean, you all see each other. Oh, I'm. We made it out of there alive. Yes, the the situation. Yeah, what we wanted. Yep. The situation that you all just escaped from was the prison break where there were e multiple exits, most of which were sealed, and so you decided to head for the, the one that was the most sealed, and behind it was simply a crystal that you all touched and were whisked away to a far-off destination that none of you recognize. The sun is pretty low in the sky. It's pretty red out. Ocean's a, a deep purple. But it's just the five of you. Well, I'm gonna start walking and motion for everybody to follow. 
Time to do a little exploring. You just picking a direction? Uh, I guess to right. Okay. Going to the right. Yeah, you make your way Good across point. the coastline. There doesn't really seem to be a specific uh, way up. You're pretty much right up against a um, uh, a sheer cliff for most of, of this beach. <clears throat> and you're just sort of walking off. Um, you all just sort of moving along this place as are you doing or saying anything? Holger is gonna check to see if there's any like large clusters of seabirds that would like indicate fishermen's or something. There is the occasional bird, but this seems to be a pretty remote location. It doesn't Do seem to be anything that designates. Uh, activity I almost said human activity but like intelligent activity maybe we need to go see what's up on top of that cliff there Slipper Jack thinks he can climb that cliff yeah, I'll give you a hand sure your fingers aren't too slippery eh we'll find out How high up is it? Um, I mean, it seems to go up a, a long ways. Maybe several hundred feet. Oh. I mean, there are probably oh, small outcroppings. Yeah. You, you seem to be, like, at the very bottom of, like, a sheer cliff. Explore the coastline. Coast coast then, right? Um. Yeah, you're just sort of on the back side of a landmass of some kind. Is that just, just cliff? Is that just chunks of driftwood? There are chunks of driftwood. Um, but there are what seem to be actual pieces of washed-up wreckage, fairly new and recent. And so the more that you look me. out, uh, make a perception check. Let's go. <laughs> hey, 21. You look out across the waters and you can see that there actually is quite a bit of wreckage slowly making its way inward. There was a massive battle just stray pieces of ships and uh, other seafaring vessels litter the horizon. I certainly hope we didn't cause any of that. Gestures out to the seascape. To be clear, where you came we from, the city of happen. Need is connected to a river but is a com is in the middle of the continent, completely landlocked. There is not ocean for like miles, many, many miles. The the closest uh, ocean would have been through the Nuvidian Empire, but even that is just like so far off it doesn't even make sense. I'm gonna call up to the people above, like the Sheer Cliff place, and ask, see anything? There is no one up there. Are you just calling? This is 
general question for everybody. I mean, you you are all just sort of walking along. And then I just ask if anybody sees anything intact so we can leave. I think whatever's going to find its way here will be here soon enough. But I know enough about survival that warmth is great. And I I guess I'll try and find some of the drier chunks. Okay, yeah. You can grab some decent driftwood. What's your plan? <clears throat> Just burn it? Uh, currently set it up along the side in case we do find a better position. Basically just keeping it out of the surf. Oh. Um, I mean, th this, uh, th this, this whole coastline is gonna be covered with debris in the next few hours or so. So, if you, if you want to be collecting wood, you can for whatever you well, yeah, I'm collecting wood, but, like, if we find a cave to sleep in, that's way better than just open coastline. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I was saying that if you wanted to s just spend time collecting wood, you could basically collect wood until the sun goes down. So I wasn't sure how much you were actually trying to collect. Like, every single, every single time that you step over something, you would have to pull it aside. Because there's quite a bit here. If, if that's what you're doing. I'll get, like, a night's worth of firewood, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you can pull that off to the side. You also feel pretty comfortable that you could just keep walking down this coastline and have a fair chance at just grabbing some whenever you find something. Alright, okay. um... I just make like a torch out of driftwood, one of the pieces he picked up. It's not okay. long enough for that. Probably, yeah. I'm just continuing okay. to walk. Yeah, I have a torch and yes. Okay. A few more hours pass, and as the the sun begins to get low, it looks so big. And as it begins to just very gently touch the high waters of the water, you can actually see it making these sort of very beautiful lines across the, the tops of the water. These just sort of streaks across from the horizon to your viewpoint. It's very interesting. Everyone make a history check. History. Historic. Except Holly. I think, I think seeing the sun actually touch the horizon and nothing but water be on there, I think that's when Whole Gear finally realizes, oh shit, we're not on a big lake. We are in somewhere I've never been before and don't know what's around. I rolled a 16. You're... A six. I, I said everyone but you, but... Oh, I didn't hear that part. That's fine. My bad. Don't worry, I rolled a 16 too. Okay. Anyone else? I rolled crap. Okay. C just looks beautiful. Um, it's a, it's at about this time that uh, whoever it was that got the amazing perception check, I'm just going to let that ride, you can actually see that there is a small vessel making its way inward. It, it looks mostly intact, uh, maybe three quarters of it. It's a small fishing vessel of some kind. Do uh, any of you know how to swim? to learn. Mm. 
What about you, Mr. I don't Mr. think I'd be any good even if I could swim out to it. Okay, I guess I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so Josh and Whole Gear are going out into the water. Yeah, something that. that big would pull me instead of be trying to pull it. I think the idea is that we steer it somehow. Of course, just steer an island. What? It's, what are you talking about? It's a boat. How? Oh. Are you going to be alright getting in water? You're not going to sizzle out? I might. I've never been in water. For a very good reason. Wait, so then how do you get clean? On fire. Okay, I guess. It felt like after maybe you were sweating a bunch. Do you even sweat? Probably not. Interesting. Alright, yeah. I start with toes. Don't go diving in. I don't need you dying. The water's warm. No. But does it quench him? No. Do I die? In fact, Thank Joshua, it feels... nice. Whereas normally water is cold and saps the heat and energy from you. This doesn't. It's, a, it's an actually more comfortable neutral than the air. Oh my god, it's magic water. What? Touches it. Just feels warm. Because the hardest member of the party is in it. What? Also because it's magic. I'm not even gonna say anything. Let's go try and wrangle us a boat, I guess. Keep it from crashing into rocks or something. Okay. I'd like both of you to make athletic checks. Ooh, not great. For me. <laughs> I'm making an athletics check to her. Yep. That's a 10. Okay. I'm not drowning yet. You're not drowning. Crap. I should. I'm drowning. What did you get? No. Josh, what did you get? Uh, 24. 24? Maybe. Yeah, I don't think you're drowning. You're pushing through the water without even having to paddle with your arms or legs you can just propel your th you can will yourself through the water almost so that you've got like a heat jet stream pushing you through the water um, and as you make your way to this vessel you can see that uh, it doesn't have a, a mast it doesn't look like it maybe ever had a mast either that or it's been so destroyed that it's hard to <laughs> nice Thank you for that image. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, <laughs> it's just what came to uh, mind immediately. Stick. <laughs> uh, how was that? Uh, 
it. This is this is too good that I actually need to. I need to. I need to put it in the video. This needs to be seen. Nice. Ah uh, yes. Okay, make sure you like put in F before we have this whole discussion. While you describe me <laughs> flowing through the water. <laughs> of course, it's David Hasselhoff. He's like the <laughs> best person. Okay. Um, and you can see that there actually is one person on this vessel. They seem like they are passed out, probably gravely injured. But alive. Get up on the vessel and slap them. Okay. Where do you slap them? Directly across the face. Okay. Hard. Make a make an unarmed strike. <laughs> All right, hold uh, on. No, how... you just roll damage. <laughs> Don't forget, they're prone. Auto crit. <laughs> <laughs> they die. Uh. <laughs> unarmed strike. A handprint is strike. seared into their skin. <laughs> Which dice do I use for an unarmed strike? No, it's it's fine. Um, <laughs> Talia, you wake up. <laughs> I don't know. Yay! I'm excellente. Good job, doctor. You, you wake up to shoot two strange men leering over you. One of them is One very them hot. <laughs> uh, I hate you for that pun. <laughs> <laughs> I, su I suddenly wake up and look at the person that, that, um, that just slapped me awake and, and go, Oh my what the hell is your major malfunction? I was a dead person on my ship. Needed an alive well, person. Oh, I beg your bloody pardon. I, I am not dead. And second Thanks of all, me. and second of all, this is my ship. It's ours now. Oh it's bloody not... hell, it's- oh bloody hell, it's not- I just got done killing a goddamn sea monster on with a few of my crew. Luckily we killed it, but there were casualties. Why don't you go there and- appears to be no other crew. It's ours now, as we outnumber you and our- Oh, Lord. oh. oh Stop being off. a dick. <laughs> Roll initiative. Oh! <laughs> oh. Stop you! Joseph, was it? Sure. You're not making a good first impression. Calm down. We need a ship. And she needs crew. That's just how it is. Fine, but we're going to vote for a captain. Fine. But first and foremost, we need to get this boat to the shore without it sinking. Good luck trying to patch the bloody hole that's in that's in the hull. Damn wow. sea creature decided that it was gonna poke a hole in it. There's a hole in the hole. There's a boot in my boot. All right. That's the... That's... There's a snake in my boot, you ingrate. And then when you All fix right, the well, ship, you can say that the hole is whole. It well, before we all decide to go and fix holes of a ship without a captain, <laughs> vote for Slippery Jack for captain. Us. The boat starts sinking a little. As you're, at, you're just extra weight on it right now. Well, 
Let's get it to the shore. Quit bitching. Let's go. Fine. <clears throat> you know the paddles or something. Has everyone seen Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one? Yes. Oh no. You know, yes. you know the scene when. Uh, oh no. The scene where Jack Sparrow is coming into port with his sinking vessel. I like to imagine that that's what's happening right now as you guys are having this conversation, that it's just slowly sinking. Yes! I'm looking for a bucket. Uh, investigation check. Also not great. Man, you're terrible at investigative work. Thirteen. There's no bucket. Fuck. There is rope. What about my investigation? I got a natural 22. You you would know that your bucket exploded. But you would know ah. how to uh, get water out of the vessel. You need to get it upright and then get weight off of it so that the water could drain out of it naturally. You fat lot, get off my boat! Get off the freaking boat! Get extra weight! I know how to get this oh, hole all patched up, but I need you two to get the hell off of it! Joshua steps off the boat. And he goes Set. sinking under. And says, You're the worst <coughs> of hosts. I don't know why you think she owes us something. I'll hand her the rope and say, I don't know how to do a knot. Please tie this off and I guess we'll drag it to shore or something. I I tie the knot. Mm, I tie it perfectly Side of hand well. Check. Let's see if you tie a knot. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. You can tie knots. Uh, I need, I need I'm, the... I'm a, I'm a bloody pirate. Of course <laughs> I can tie knots. What the hell All right. is the matter with you? You know what? You, you know what? Sleight of hand check, Missy. That's for sassing me. Never sass the DM. <laughs> exactly. The other two of you mind. make athletics checks to, to pull the boat. Hold on. Uh, Joshua, you up advantage. Wait, uh... <laughs> so hear me out. Okay. I'm not lying when I say I got another 24. All right. Yeah. I got an I got a natural 22 for that sleight of hand. Okay. I got a five. You 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 tie their shoelaces together and tie them to the boat before they even step off the boat without them realizing. Oh, so that's why I'm drowning now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to die. <laughs> what what did Holgier get? I got a five. That's why I think tying my shoelaces didn't help. Okay. Uh Joshua's pulling the boat and Holgier. <laughs> Holgier's getting pulled behind the boat. I'm okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead. Well How long yeah, can you hold no. your breath? What's your constitution modifier? Plus three, pretty well. All right, yeah, you're fine. That's that's enough to get the boat pulled to shore. I've gotten swirlies before. I know what it's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you get for slapping me awake. Wrong person. No way. Yeah, it's you too. Ever are punished. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep on making hot pots throughout this whole campaign. What was that? You like glitched out. And it's not your puns. It's not your puns. Okay. Very temperature puns. You're like whispering. What are you saying? I, I'm sorry. Is 
that it's very temperature puns. Is my thing making you? If you're gonna you're say something, enough, just don't right? mutter it quietly. So that all we hear is just. Be you know, if you're gonna say your something, just say it. English, mother flipper, do you speak it? Anyway. Just say. It, mm, you make it to shore. Mind. Never mind. Never mind, young lady. It's been an hour, and all we've done is pull a boat to shore. Set up fire. Okay. You are kind of glitching out, so I, I would check either your microphone connection or your internet or something. When my internet, I'm gonna be honest, I'm in a basement. Oh, okay. Or this corner. Get some Ethernet. Oh. <clears throat> Ethernet and Ethernet to a laptop. Anywho, uh, Talia, you watch as these two, alright, I guess, this one person pulls your boat ashore and you see. Just the, the complete array of different sized people. Starting from the, the shortest to the tallest. <laughs> I guess now would be like a good time to introduce everyone's character. And like what they look like. That bomb to chore, Joshua is you ever see that meme where that dude tries to copy that weird get out of the pool sexy scene from like every movie ever? Girl with water. Sure. <clears throat> he Joshua does not like the water. You jump out of the water like a dolphin and flick your hair back like in a commercial. <laughs> and then he's holding just a bottle of Old Spice? No. Maybe it's Maybelline? <laughs> Not even a shampoo. Yeah. Well, just name and no, it's just old spice. It's just a bunch of spices yeah. that are old. Yeah, anyway. Uh, the one you nearly drew. Go ahead, finish your thing. I, I finished it. Okay. Uh, the one you nearly drowned with by tying his shoelaces together. Uh, he is a... currently wearing a former prison uniform. Uh, shoulders are a little slouched because he's currently re-tying his boots. Terrible prank, by the way. Uh, <laughs> av average height. Brown-haired human. Carries a lucky rock all the time. Here's a human. Yeah. No. Know that. Jack, your turn. Well, Slippery Jack is a little half mean guy. He's really short. He's only about three eleven. Uh, really, really uh, small. He's got like red hair with blonde streaks growing through it. He's got green eyes. He looks up and down and goes, "What do we got here? Did you find a little lassie with you? Did you? Did that come with the boat?" She claims to be the owner. Uh, it's hard to dispute that. She was on it. So the name is Slippery Jack, young lady. It's nice to meet you. 
Oh, nice that's a good you. idea. My name is Holgear, by the way. The amazing Josh. It's Josh. Josh. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you all. I am Talia. You're a sea monster hunter. Mm. And acrobat. So what happened out there on the water, Tal? You look like there was uh, some sort of big battle or something. What happened out there? Me and my crew were were hunting a sea monster that was um now it's harassing the waters. Luckily it has been luckily it has been killed, but there were countless fatalities. Whole crew meeting. Well, given that she's the only one on the uh boat. I think we can assume. You did manage to slay the beast, correct, Talia? Yes, it is killed. Good, one less problem. Sure it is. Now everyone, let's figure out who can build a boat. Pair about their what? I can give a hand, but I I mostly just pay people to fix things. I don't think that's an option here. Thank you. I've noticed. <laughs> and so it's decided. Elia is the captain and we're the crew. Whoever fixes the boat fixes the boat and we are correct. Unintelligible. Crap. That was intelligible. <laughs> Crap. I don't want crap to be intelligible. <laughs> okay, so it's decided. Talia's the captain, and we fix the boat. We all go home happy and never talk to each other again. Agreed. Do you know where we're at, Talia? Yes, I, uh... I think most of us are out of our element here. You can say that again. Uh, are you not and used exactly to being on here? the sea? Believe uh, this is an island. Uh, Sparrow, would I know exactly where we're at or no? Yeah. Okay, so where the hell are we? <laughs> oh, you're. Oh, now you want me to help? Uh, you can Shut literally. Up. You can literally make up the name of anything right now. I'll let you name this place. How about that? Okay. That's I'll, not, I'll, I'll come that's up with the not. That's not. That's not normal. You're supposed uh, uh, to already have the freaking name already. More shipwreck cove. Why not? The adventure. I I meant like this specific location. Anyways, um, you are currently under the this cliffside along the beach doesn't necessarily have a specific name. Uh, there's not any real specific importance to this area. 
um, the ocean that you guys are on uh, is the Sierra Ocean. Um, farther down along the beach is the high rise where there is a, uh, a large uh, sort of meeting spot for most other ships um, that sort of leads to it, it's, it's a weird uh, change to the landscape where there seemed to have once been this huge jutting landmass that went out onto this peninsula but has collapsed inwards and almost made a bunch of little islands and uh, people have sort of settled on those uh, and it's this cool little cove kind of area where there's a lot of uh, seawater that rises up uh, and makes it so that you can basically pull your boat right up to your house and then it goes out uh, during the, the nighttime. So um, that that's called the high rise. Um, and the main reason for that is because there is uh, at the farthest island away from the coast is one of the, the, the tallest points where there is a big uh, tavern where everyone meets together and has their uh, sort of celebratory yeah that's the that's the closest um, and also safest haven for uh, you know escapees convicts pirates uh, or just people looking to get away and do their own thing All right. Do you, did you guys want any more information like than that? Sounds like a good place to go to me. The hey. drink's free. Um, Are, the dr <laughs> Are the drinks free? <laughs> yeah, I don't think the drinks are free. No. I know. No on the drinks. That's a no on the drinks. No. There are drinks, they're just not free. To a kind of kind of glum facade and walk towards the bar. You mean towards we are currently the bars? We are currently still on the shoreline. Right. It would probably be best to find a place to camp for the night. Because it is going to be a bit of a trek. Not a bit of a trek, but, you know. A trek. A trek. A trekkie. Yep. Looking for anything that could be of use that washes up. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of stuff. Uh, make a make a uh, either perception or investigation check. Let's go perception. Let's go. Oh, it was so close to being good. You get it was, a it was a nineteen, then it rolled onto a natural one. Okay. Uh, what you see is what you see. That checks out. Well, Joshua is going to hold aloft his torch and plant it into the ground near the ship. D did he take his torch out swimming or did he leave it at the shore? Did he just make another one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Made another one. He lost his torch at sea. Okay. Long lost lover. The the sun has far set into the waters at this point that it's actually illuminated the ocean to make the water look almost this deep kind of purplish red color. Uh, and an instantly at the far ends of the horizon, you can actually see the darkness uh, and the light spots of night sky starting to fade into view. What are you all doing? I'm taking a nap. 
Okay. Keep watch. Okay. I think Holger is gonna test something. Uh, he's gonna throw his rock. He's gonna try and find the like flattest, most horizontal portion of the cliffs. Mm-hmm. And the, and then he's gonna test at which angles does his rock return. Uh, all of them. What about just straight throwing? Yeah. Every awesome. single time you throw your rock, it eventually comes back into your hand. Even if you, like, toss it just straight onto the ground, you watch as almost like the sand sort of shifts a little bit and a wind blows, like, carving out a path that it just sort of slides back towards you. Okay, not one action returns to hand, but eventually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll even say that you could probably, like, lob it up and... Or if, like, throw it so hard that it gets wedged into something, and then eventually it gets unstuck, plops and rolls back to you. Holger's gonna keep it in his pocket close to his chest. If there, if there is a pocket close to his chest. Sure. Chest pocket. Okay. Um, so you all are just making a campfire on the, the beach? Sure seems that way. Okay. Uh, Talia wanted to take first watch? Yes. Make a perception check. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. You keep an eye out, and you know that there's probably not going to be any activity over here, so you feel confident. Looking at these people that you've just met, this strange conglomeration of what could be considered a crew, uh, you have no idea how they met, or why they're rolling together, why they're here. They don't look like they're from around here. But uh, looking across the waters, you actually feel a bit relieved to not see anything. Also, are we all wearing the same clothes because we are in a prison? Uh, no. You all wearing your individual clothes. Oh. Let me add my fancy clothes back in my thing then. Yeah, you, you weren't given prison uniforms. Okay, so. I assumed I assumed we got stripped. No. Wait, so does that mean I still have all my money? Uh, no. Oh. All, all of your items and such were taken from you. The, the only thing you have is uh, rock. Rock like, and the clothes on my back. Yep. You got a rock. I got that reference. Uh, I appreciate oh. the SpongeBob. That wasn't SpongeBob. Oh, that was God. peanuts. Oh, my yes, God. it was peanuts. Oh, it was Charlie Brown. How in the world do you? I am so mad. I am so mad. Uh, this, uh, this uh, right now. <laughs> DM, you better torture him for that. You better torture him. Um, ten million points of health. His rock is destroyed. Yeah. No. Uh, but he does end up sleeping on it, giving him uh, a bad crick in his back the next day. It's not just a boulder, it's a rock. That's not the same thing as, I got a rock. Exactly. Freaking cheese. Um, anywho. Uh, I got so thrown off. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. 
Um, everyone here gets an adversity token, which is a special token uh, that we'll use for things. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and explain it again. Basically, adversity tokens you get whenever a travesty befalls you. This isn't necessarily a result of like a, a nat one, but sometimes it will be. Basically, a terrible thing will happen. Adversity tokens can be used, or you can expend them whenever you get close on succeeding a roll. Um, so, you know, if you ever roll like a 14 and you really want to succeed, but you don't want to re roll like your d20 again, you can expend an adversity token to get it up to a full success, basically. Um, and you will get adversity tokens whenever tragedy befalls you uh, and whatnot. So. You all got one when you got arrested, and uh, Talia got one when her crew was attacked and destroyed. Um, but I will also hand them out whenever I make a reference and people get it. So uh, I'll say that you all, the people that got the I got a rock reference will also get an adversity token. Oh, so I get it. So I get it. Two tokens so you have, so you instead two, of one. Yeah. You, have, you have two. Okay. I got a rock. Yep. So <laughs> showing up to sessions will give you access to good stuff. Um, who's taking second watch? Old gear. Yes, Josh. Okay. Old gear guy. Make your perception check. He is concentrating on the shoreline. Okay. Not the waters. You were. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking to me to roll one. No, whole gear is doing his watch. Okay. I'm rolling pretty. I think we both said it at the same time. Oh, well, you can go next then. Unless you want to go at the same time. You can have the same watch if you want. We could do that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I rolled pretty mid. Nah. I rolled pretty mid at 20. Okay. You're much better than me. Um, something that you notice, Slippery Jack, is that looking out across the shoreline is that this doesn't feel like Eternia. Eternia is the continent that you guys were on, where the City of Need is, with the Nuvidian Empire to the west and the Alarian Expanse to the east. This seems completely different. And actually, as you're looking up at the stars, they you don't recognize them at all. The way that they're spaced and the way they're orientated. And he would know that because he's proficient in navigator tools. Yeah. I know. That's why I said that. Yeah. You also know like we're not in Kansas anymore. You also notice that there's two moons. One smaller and much farther away than the first one, but there are two moons. I take it I'll that point was that not out to uh, Logger. Yeah. Uh, uh, we only had one moon before. I'm not sure we're in the same place. Oh dear. I don't think we should have touched that crystal. Well, yeah, well I mean the alternatives at the time. That's great. Right. Or a quick forever. death, one or the other. It was a 50-50 chance, I'd say. Maybe 60-40 if we were rather unlucky that day. Who's taking next final watch? I guess that's Josh. Yes. Alright, perception check. Rolling perception. Got a 15. Okay. Yeah, the night goes by uneventful.
Natalia. Yes? As you are sleeping, you have a dream. The dream is that you are out on your boat. And it's as you are making your way out to fight this creature. It's early morning, hoping to catch this thing by surprise before it wakes up. To get everyone in position. All around you are multiples of ships. People that you know, some of which are your friends or rivals. And as you all get ready, you know that you have to do this. People are relying on you. No one else would risk their life than just to do this. But there's a sense of responsibility that brought you all together for this one moment. This thing, this creature, has been a legend all over the place, but it's made its way here. And that just won't stand. It's been maybe a couple generations between families where this thing has been destroying ships, harassing settlements, and no one's took a stand until now. Because all of you understand that sometimes no one else is going to do something and you have to be the ones to step up. And maybe some of these people came here just for the sake of fighting this thing to chase that opportunity to face off against the creature of lore. But in this moment, what are you feeling? as you have your friends beside you on this small vessel not prepared for battle but augmented for this one moment how are you feeling? I think I would feel nervous but yet but yet calm. And you turn to your crewmates and they also acknowledge the feeling. And together with everyone you fight and it is a long arduous process and while all of you grew up on the sea maneuvering across the waves is your life this moment this experience is unlike anything that you have all experienced it is a trial just staying afloat above the waters almost seems impossible. And many are tempted just to jump into the water after this beast, but that would only bring death. And many do. Many jump in with swords drawn, spells readied, and none of them surface. But slowly, eventually, it's worn down. It's weakened to the point where it knows it's losing. And in that one final moment, it crashes upwards, taking a last few of the fighters down with it. Your crew. And as your friend locks eyes with you, they simply smile and nod. 
and as their voice shouts, their throat is ripped asunder as they call down a massive lightning strike that turns the creature inside out. It was your crew in the final moments that burned the thing and fought the battle on the inside. And as the corpse slowly slunk to the bottom, you knew that you would never see them again. And as the waves came crashing down on top of you, what do you say or do in this moment? before you black out. Upon seeing my my entire crew mm, slaughtered, I mm, I just mm, I I yell I yell out a very loud no, and and as the waves come upon me, I look up in in horror, almost thinking that this might be it. That I would. Most li- that I would most likely die among my crew. And it's as you recall this moment that you probably didn't remember as you set up camp on that beach. Memory was washed from your mind. Seeing this dream almost feels unreal but you know it has to be real this pain and suffering this emotion this turmoil locks you in and you know that you're not imagining it and as you stand on your boat waves frozen the water raining down stops and is still and you're just simply breathing in this moment as you realize that this is a dream, a memory. And then, out of the solace of understanding that this is a dream, there's a shattering terror that breaks through the peace of recognizing this as a memory. This isn't just a dream. You realize that there's a real presence inside of this mindscape. And as you turn towards it, you wake up. It is just barely morning. It is still quite dark out. The sun is slinking through the water on the horizon, illuminating the the thick blue water again with that almost almost red hue that ripples through the purple. And again, this is a different consistency than what you're used to seeing on your original homes, the four of you. For Talia, this is normal. This is what she's always known, but you realize that the sun here is not yellow. It's a deep orange, almost red, and the water is not pure blue. It is almost uh, greenish purple. And slowly but surely, you're starting to notice little subtle differences between your world and hers. Well, this is what we got now. Guess we gotta deal with it. It's 
So what's the person right. do to find work around here, Talia? We're kind of tapped out of time. Um, well, there's a ta well, there's a tavern up on the high rise, but it's a but um, there's a tavern up on the high rise, but um, it's gonna it take you it's gonna take us a while to get there. Can we get there quicker going in your boat? I guess it needs to be fixed first. It's gonna need fixed first, but maybe. Well, patch the boat before breakfast, I suppose. Let's see if we can't you find can something to patch it with. Fix the boat. Fix the boat, gotta fix the boat. Oh, you know we gotta fix the boat. If only there was some wood lying around that we could well, fix the boat. Right. Unless yeah. somebody got a pocket of nails, we uh probably ain't gonna be doing no boot I got a pocket, got a pocket full of nails to use to fix the boat. Except Dang. we don't. <laughs> I'm sure there's nails in all kinds of woods here. Gary, you gather wood. Sylvester and I will add rocks to use as hammers. And we've got someone with fire to melt the wood point. down. Go How can you melt a wood? Uh, fire does not <laughs> melt wood. Can't melt wood. Nope. But you can melt some pine tar if we find some. You can also burn wood to get nails. How do you get nails from burning wood? By having wood that already has nails in it, but you burn it instead of prying the nails out. Very fine. Get me boards with nails and nails with boards so I can get rocks to hammer them into the ship of the hall and... We can all go get drunk and have breakfast at a bar meant for criminals. Well, when you put it like that... <laughs> Sounds like a good afternoon to me. That like works, yeah. Realistic mates. Ashua gets up out of the sand and... Uh, starts picking up rocks and trying to figure out which one is the heaviest that I can pick up with one hand. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. How often do pirates get stranded on islands with busted ships in a shipwreck sort of cove with teleported weirdos? Have you ever been a pirate? Like, every day. That's how I like to talk about it. Uh, I'll say that it only takes, like, an hour or two at the most to repair the ship. All right, do well, we find any? Do we find any sellable scrap while we're out? All right, you twisted my arm. Make a perception check or Let's investigation. Go. More natural I'll allow one. investigation. We're continuing the trend. I got a seven. Okay. You find some seashells that you can sell by the seashore. I'll take it. Okay. Which one of you are now named Sally? Named Sally. Adversity token. I <laughs> For which Adversity one token. <laughs> Everyone that I've got the reference. I've got a spell that'll help us. Oh. If you're saying huh right now, you don't get an adversity token. That's all. <laughs> I'm so glad being a nerd helps me. Wait a minute. Seashells by a seashore. Is that supposed to be like a Kingdom Hearts reference or something? No! God it's damn it! The, it's the old 
It's the old. All right, now we're really rolling Dude, initiative. Adversity token. Mm. <laughs> it summon the Draco Lich. Uh, he's already here. He's behind you. Oh. Yeah, more along the lines of behind me. Find summon the Xeno Sith. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Damn, I you thought just... I was making a joke. It's a secret. Is that like a Xenomorph in Star Wars? Oh my gosh, exactly. I'm going to end the campaign if you all don't stop. <laughs> that, was a, hey. that was a legitimate question. Continue, oh please, DM mine. It's about, uh... <clears throat> it's about midday by the time that you make it to, uh, the high rise. Uh, and it is just, uh, a small collection of little, uh, islands off the coast with people coming to and fro. Um, there's a not as many, much activity that you're used to, Talia. And people seem kind of down, realizing that a bunch of people just went off to their deaths. And you don't know how many other people survived and made it back already, but you don't see a whole lot of activity that you're probably used to. But it's still fairly lighthearted, just the same. Alright, well, you know how... You know how people usually stand at, like, the very front of the ship and put their foot on the thing? Stern. No. Stern of a ship. You mean the bow? That's the front. The bow. The I know, bow I of the ship standing at the has his foot on there and is doing the whole... You know, like, when you do a kickflip with the boat? Okay, no more. Fine, Joshua is just sitting down and chilling, <laughs> waiting for breakfast to be given to him. <laughs> I feel like this music is going to be very ironic soon. Bre breakfast is grabbing a seagull out of the air, squeezing it until its eggs pop out, cooking those up, and then slamming it down the grill. No way, Joshua is sunbathing. Why? Out of all the people, you're the person that least needs to sunbathe. But that means I can be used as a grill. Okay. Sorry, I feel like that's kind of gross. <sighs> oh, Lord. Continue. No, you continue. That's what this game is about. It's about you guys role-playing. So, Talia, is there a uh, regular pawn shop around the area? Not particularly. Uh, you could probably find... Uh, it's sort of a need-to-know basis of like who's looking for what. But you could probably ask around and see who's buying or who's selling. Usually people well, come I'm... in and advertise or like set up like, hey, I just got a big haul or whatnot. But most most people keep to themselves. This is this is a hideaway for personal contractors that do jobs and get money and just hang out. This isn't really the place to come to do wares. Yes, I'm just going to have to sit here with no coin in my pocket. Well, if you're looking to put some coin in your pocket, there's one place to go for certain. And that's the high ride, the high dive, which is the tavern at the the very top peakest peak. And what do people do the, there for money? Uh, all sorts of jobs. 
Ooh. Well, I think that's where we need to go, guys. I can do all sorts of things, so who knows? An adventure, Captain. No, oh, shoot. There we go. Uh, I, I didn't finish building like the the thingy or whatever, but I can. I don't know. Just plop us in. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I don't. Is is theater of the mind okay? I'm just. I mean, I don't <laughs> care. Okay. Uh, I'll have a bet. I'll have a better map next time. So let's just keep going with Theater of the Mind. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if this is going to cut it. I mean... Cool. Um, yeah, you make your way. It is an arduous trek climbing up uh, to the peak of this thing. It's sort of a winding path. Um, and the higher you go, the fresher the air feels. And you understand why someone climbed all the way up to this single point to build a tavern and why it's so popular. It's a very freeing experience. Um, you open the door, no one gives you any look. Even though you walk in with a, a halfling, a fire genasi, and a dragon lich, no one gives you any, any weird looks. Everyone's situated in their own business. People are throwing back drinks and tossing coin and in some back corners and secluded tables you can see that people are uh, making private deals and getting job offers uh, Talia with your experience that you know where your crew has their own personal table Gentlemen, right this way. And we go. And I take them to my me and my crew's okay. personal table. Have a seat, gents. All okay. right. Do you know any of these people around? Someone sounds tired. Uh, it's yawning a lot. A as you say hey, that, gonna... uh, a massive man stands up from his table. He's got this uh, bald head with this beard that covers uh, most of his face, uh, but it isn't too long. Uh, it's very cut, very, very fine. Uh, big, just sort of uh, barrel shape with huge arms that can't even be contained within his shirt. Uh, and he stands up holding his glass. Uh, you recognize this as Morgan, uh, one of the... Uh, what's the second in command aboard a vessel? Uh, first mate? First mate. The, the first mate of one of the crew that was out on uh, the fight. Um, and he, he raises his glass as he sees you, Talia. And he said... We have another survivor, men. Welcome, Talia. Same to you too, Morgan. He raises his afraid. glass, sloshing it. Around for my friends. Survivors against the king. <laughs> Never Indeed. live the king. And the, they all sort of uh, rally behind the same chant. Uh, people seem to be celebrating that the monster is slain, and people chip in for your. You get a free whatever you want because you're a survivor of the the fight. You 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 and your crew sacrifice stuff, and you actually survived. So they want to do something for you. 
So you guys get free mood today. Oh, nice. Well, I'm uh, going to get a really good will tall glass. <laughs> Morgan yeah. just gives you a wink uh -huh. and a nod and sits back down. Sorry, that's all I wanted to do. Uh that means free breakfast, right? Yep. <laughs> While well, Joshua waves over a waiter and orders a really tall glass of mead and bacon. Really big plate of bacon. Okay. Yeah. A disgusting amount of bacon. A disgusting amount of bacon. <laughs> Uh, they they actually haven't invented bacon in this reality. They just have like weird, uh, kind of soft jerky. Well, I order a really big plate of that. Okay. Disgusting amount of that. And you drown well, don't it in syrup. Ask if I die. Yeah, make a Constitution saving throw. Yeah, hold on, I'm getting my dice. A deuce. Got a two. Okay. Yeah, it's not really your thing. And, you know, after you had, like, two Slim Jims in a row. Yeah, that sort of slimy feeling. Mm hmm I think Whole Gear will pick up the rest of the plate if he doesn't finish it. All right, make a constitution saving throw. Uh, Thirteen. Okay. You're you're able to hide it a little bit better, but this is a lot. You get the idea that this is something that you you sort of eat as, like, the last thing that you do before going out for not eating for a while. Uh, well, it's as far as whole gear knows, that's exactly what he's doing. Okay, yeah. You, you're usually supposed to end, eat it like at the end of your meal, like after your desserts and whatnot, to sort of gum up your system and keep it all in there. So you don't lose right. it out in the sea. I don't think that would help. <laughs> That's like an old wives tale. Yeah, it's more of a tradition thing. Gotcha. It, it it it's like soft tack, which is not how tack is supposed to be. Anyways. Yeah, ye old floppy jerky. Sounds like a synonym for limp dick. Mm. But I uh, mean that too. Anywho, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys discussing or talking about? Disgusting as bacon is. Uh, talking about maybe getting some work. No, so when you what is about there? I know the king was just slain, but is there any other bounties, tasks to do? We could just resurrect the king and ask him. Talia, can you find something for me? I swear, I swear by the gods, if you decide to resurrect that monster again, I will kill you myself. Uh, the beast right. was referred to as the king of the undertow. By the way that it would draw... it, The way it would swim around and draw ships away from their natural current and then uh, dot, uh, swing up and then grab the ship and then dive it down below where it would just crash it and let the let the people sink and die of drowning before even fighting and eating them quick question is that a reference to is that a role? reference to the Kraken no darn it uh, oh, they have their own King of the Undertow then. Alright. 
it, it's just a general legend. I'll, I'll, I'll leave the, the general picture and purpose of it up to you because it's no longer anything. Okay. So, if you want it to be a squid thing, it can be, but it was not intended to be a Captain, reference. ask Morgan for a job. If you want, I'll, I'll, I'll actually show you guys the reference afterwards. But I, I, as you're saying, what do we do for work? A familiar blonde-haired man uh, steps over to your table, Talia, um, and kind of with his hands on the back of your chair, looking around at your table, realizing that all the chairs are full. And he's like, "Ah, oh, well, you seem to have gathered a new crew already, even after surviving the king. Interesting. You wouldn't perhaps be looking for more work, are you? As a matter of fact, good sir, we are! Michael steps forward and kind of presents himself between two chairs, uh, smiling at all of you. Well, let's get down to business. That's where we're going to tonight's session.